Hey everyone, it looks like we are live. Thank you so much for hanging out. I thank God for everyone who is here tonight. Thank you for joining me. We could talk about art, go over technique together, work on a painting, answer any questions you might have. You ask questions that I may have. So that would be very cool. So let's see who we have today. We have Patty. How are you? Great to see you, Colette. All the way from Wisconsin, Patty from Illinois. We have Steve Leahy. How are you, sir? All the way from Ohio. We got a Midwest thing going on here. And let's see. We have Steve Lang all the way from the UK. Good to see. Great to see you. We have Blue all the way from Long Island, New York. Great to see you. And let's see who else we have. Uh, we have... Uh, John Diekman, all the way from Wisconsin, continuing this uh, Midwest feel going on. Great to see you, John. Let's see what else we have. Who else we have? We have... So far, uh, Nameless Subscriber. I don't know. I think someone said hi to Nameless, but I don't see him here. Oh, there you are, Mr. Nameless Subscriber, all the way from Cali. Good to see you. I'm so glad you're here, sir. Okay, so I don't think I missed anybody. And let's see if we can uh, get the ball rolling. So like I said, I thank God you guys are all here. Uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you. So I've been working. So last week we started part one of the beautiful, cute, talented Kelly McDonald. Do you ever hear her speak? It's She's so adorable. She really is. Uh, just a talented actress. Very interesting, stunning look about her. And that's one of the things that really struck me. You know, when I'm looking for a model, I'm looking for something that is like an extraordinary look about them. Something that makes you stop and go, wow, she's different. And that's what I look for when I'm painting. I have two airbrushes here. I have my Extreme Patriot Arrow. Yours and my favorite airbrush is the customized version. Customized means that it works. It's it's like the Extreme Patriot Arrow Turbo. You know, it really is. Does everything you want it to do. It's almost like an extension of your mind and your fingertips. I sell this on inkflingers.com this thing, I don't, I never touched anything else after that except for when I do the white mixture or backgrounds. And then here is another customized airbrush by Moi. And this is the Extreme Patriot Arrow 105. All the same detail and beautiful ergonomic feel and the micro control of the air valve with a bigger cup. This is for great for when you're doing larger paintings and backgrounds and stuff like that. But you don't want to sacrifice the detail. This is a 0 .30 needle nozzle combination, but it's really not that. It's the fact of how it's centered, uh, how much the needle actually uh, protrudes out of the nozzle, all those different things. And it just is an amazing airbrush. Let's see who else we have here. We have Mr. Raul. How are you, sir? Good to see you. So glad you're here. And I think I didn't miss anybody, which is... Fantastico. All right, so it's the first time I'm working on her since last week. And let's see if I can zoom in. And all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to develop her a little more. And remember, I didn't work for like an hour or so, so I'm just testing my airbrush. Making sure it's doing everything I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. So let's go. So I'm going for relative value here. I realize it's early going that everything around is very light, right? So everything's going to look very dark. So I'm not really trying to get the exact value. That would be counterproductive in the early going. You don't want to try and hit that exact value. And don't try and taste the cookies 
before they're done. And I'm just working on the cast shadow of her cute nose. There we go. I'm going to let it dry before I do any erasing because you don't want to damage the surface of your painting. In this case is the color line paper by Canson. Your and my favorite painting surface when it comes to Airbrush India inks. There we go. Mr. Brad, how are you, sir? Always a pleasure to see you. How's everything over there in Manitoba? British Columbia. No, Manitoba is the actual province. So it's not Manitoba, British Columbia. That's funny. And I'm just very gently working on these larger shapes. And we'll get to the smaller shapes as we go. But you still want to make sure that you're not messy. There's never a reason to be messy. Ever, never, ever a reason to be messy. Always try and be as clean and crisp at all times. Leave it for those oil painters and their stinky studios. Yeah, I called you out oil painters. You know, they walk around thinking that their medium is the best. But in reality, it's a bygone era medium. It's over. It's heyday is done. You know, there's better materials. Anything that you're working with, whether you want to work in paint, you work in acrylic. They have slow drying acrylic. Uh, anything that you can think of, its advantages are, it's just people holding on to tradition the wrong traditions you hold on to tradition that is excellent but you don't hold on tradition to the sacred tradition am i right so that's how i feel about oil painting and believe me i was i studied oil painting for seven years so i'm not coming from left field with this i know a lot about it Hey, Zavi, great to see you. Yes, I'm using the detail mixture, and I'm doing four drops of the detail mixture and four drops of water. Mike Deloach, how are you? Mike is all the way from Atlanta area, and we also have uh, Zavi, who I believe is in Arizona. Am I right, sir? So I'm trying to get... Trying to know all the geography of you all. All right, so. Hey, Dwayne, how you doing? Good to see you, sir. Always a pleasure, Dwayne. I'm so glad you're here. And Dwayne is from California, if I'm not mistaken, right, sir? California or Nevada? Mr. Willie, how are you? How's everything, my friend? Always a pleasure to see you, Willie. How's life over there in uh, Massachusetts? Always a pleasure, sir. And so you see, I worked on her nose a little bit, which is good. And I said I was going to erase. I believe it's dry enough. 
let's see. Now I'm not using any kinds of shields for the background or anything because remember we are we're working inside the face area so really very little chance of any overspray. You'd have to be pretty magic overspray to get outside of this area. Ah, uh, thank you, Willie. Always a pleasure. I, f I don't forget good people. So it's easy. So how's the stream? Is the stream going okay? Yes, uh, Zavi, you have the older set of the inks before I develop the uh, detail mixture. That's a new development. I am me. I'll see what I can do for you, okay? So let me see. If I could uh, get some of that uh, detail mixture out to you. Yeah, you're going to love the detail mixture. Definitely. Okay. And her nose is so interesting. I love it, actually. That is very true, my friend. No clogged airbrushes, Brad says, when you use my inks. And you know what? That's just the truth. That's not an opinion. That's just the truth. And Brad has been using my inks for over, going on three years now. And, you know, we know what causes uh, clogs in the airbrush. And it definitely isn't inks. Because you know what? Airbrushes were made for inks. Not the other way around. Just developing her mouth there. And then we'll move over to her eyes. We never want to have her eyes fall further back. So as far as in development. So let's start with the eye on camera right. I'm going to lower the air pressure on the pack valve a little bit Go. Let's zoom in, shall we? There we go. Okay. Let's make sure we have a nice... There we go. Okay. The shapes are often described by the adjacent shapes than the shapes themselves. And that is definitely indicative here in her lower eyelid. What I can do is I can go into autofocus real quick and just make sure I autofocus, go back into manual, and then just do this again. 
This way I know I definitely have focus. Now, our instincts are definitely, let's go ahead and let's put in detail, but we can't do that. We can't develop one feature before everything else. We can bring it along a little bit of a head, but you don't want to bring it off along all together. Well, you don't want to bring it on piecemeal. You want to do it all together. And there's no way around it because doing it all together is the right way to do it. Okay. Let's see. Dwayne says, Nameless, is there great vids on polishing needles? Oh, cool. Okay, that's great advice there, Dwayne. Definitely. Oh, Blue says, the painting's turning out one. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. And Patty says, hit the like button. So thank you, Blue. Thank you, Patty. Appreciate it. And... There we go. And of course, we have to make sure we're paying attention to the anatomy of this picture. It's so important. Actually, it's the most important thing. If you have the anatomy wrong, it's almost like, you know, uh, it's like dressing a mannequin, you know? No matter what dress you're going to put on it, it's not alive. But if you know the, ma if you know the anatomy, your painting is going to be alive. It's going to have life. Okay, now, corner of her eye comes to a more of a downward point there. I mean, you can, you don't have to do, you can't do detail, but you can fix the measurements in the early going. Why continue working on a measurement that's wrong? So you have to adjust that whenever you see it. And let's bring this shadow right here, increasing my distance. The airbrush is basically a, a tool that works on rules of science, right? Rules of physics. The further you're away from the surface, the larger the cone. Larger the cone, the more gradated the spray pattern. More gradated the spray pattern, the lighter the spray. So use all those tools. You would be, all that knowledge, you would, it would be not in your best interest not to use that knowledge. Okay, so let's move on to I number two. There we go. So if you look at the, the whole picture, you can see how much I developed one eye from the next. So that means our job is to go ahead and catch up the other eye. If we don't do that, it's not going to be in our interest because as we're working, we need to be able to reference both eyes and bring them together. It's very important. Let's see here. Zoom in. Okay, now. Okay, so we are going to work on eye number two, camera left.
this is a cast shadow down here and that has to be differentiated from this which is the actual eyelash And I can always lower my pack valve because the Extreme Patriot Arrow has a pack valve. And that's the best thing out there. And The white of the eyes are usually not white at all, so always keep that in mind. Beautiful. Okay. And now we're going to work on the lower eyelid. Some people call it the bags under the eyes. It's really just the eyelid. And what's below the eyelid is the obicularis oculi. And that is a round muscle. And it goes around the eye, both eyes. There's an obicularis oris on the right, as well as the left. Highly recommend uh, if you're going to do portraits, get to know these muscles. It's going to make you a better portrait painter. So, that's a good enough reason for me. You know, only erase where it's dry. On the camera left, because the the light source is coming from the left hand side, and so that is causing a very much high key uh, level of uh, dynamic range here. So it's going to be a little bit different than camera left because it's on the shadow side. And Gotta make sure I indicate the lower eyelid here. And then here a little bit of the obicularis oculi. And then you have the malar fat coming over here. Like I said, you don't have to know it, but you don't have to get better as a portrait painter either. Let's see. Uh. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking, Colette. Definitely. Thank you, Colette. I appreciate it. And I'm going to let that dry and work out this area. But you can see how I'm working out both eyes. And so just taking that to the next level. And now I'm also going to make sure that I uh, just kind of paint around the malar fat. And malar means, uh, malar means cheek. So a lot of the answers of what the anatomical forms are and their names 
are basically in the names, which is quite fascinating. Okay, so pencil. In the early going, you'll be using the pencil a lot. You know why you use a pencil a lot? Because it's in your best interest. That's a little bit too further out than I want it to be. So let me just come in. Take your time. There's absolutely no point for speed unless you're trying to steal a base. So even the bag underneath the eye, it's a very small form, but even that form causes a cast shadow. So if you're thinking about the forms, both well, large and small, your painting will paint itself because you're no longer painting noses and eyes and ears. You're just painting forms. And very cool. Patty, have a great night. Thank you so much. And take care. Always a pleasure. Again, this is part of the malar fat coming down right there. And so as you can see, I'm, I'm working on the forms, both on the skin level and under the skin level, at the muscular level and at the skeletal level. That's way too dark and I'm going to go ahead and lighten that up. Now it very well may fall back in line once I darken everything that's around it. Hey, ho, you're uh, Moshe Leahy. How are you? Good to see you. Oh, from Vancouver. How are you? How's life over there in Vancouver, British Columbia? So it's a pleasure to see you. And are you an airbrush artist yourself? Okay, so we're doing pretty well. Great, everybody's welcoming, welcoming, uh, Hora, Hora, Hora. I hope I'm saying your name right, but I don't think I am. Okay, I said I was going to lighten this up a little bit, and I'm going to. I had to wait for it to dry, right? If I didn't wait for it to dry, then that would have been bad. So, And then I'll lighten up the dark right next to it, and then there's going to be a light just to the right of that shape. And let's go ahead and work on the mouth. And in the mouth, we do have a definite delineated way to lips stop right sometimes we don't considering you know with the shadow and everything like that 
you don't always have that delineated but in this spot we do but we do see that there is an overlap of of a little bit of uh, flesh that's right on the corner of each of our mouths and that overlap is what gives the shadow on the corners of our mouths there we go and once it dries we'll go ahead and give more shape to her lips but just establishing And I can see it fades out a little bit more over here. So the bottom lip really doesn't sit on the face. There's a piece of flesh right there. And that's almost like a little like platform or something like that, which is quite interesting. If you want to endeavor to paint the human form, then you must learn everything about the human form if you want to do it successfully. And if you want to do it at a level that is higher than what's being done on average, right? So you want to be extraordinary. Starting to get down her cute nose and everything. Always look at the grain of the skin. Feel what's going on underneath and that will tell you the direction of the skin because the muscles and the tendons are going to dictate where those skin, where that skin is going, what direction, being pulled in one direction and kind of relaxed in another. I heard about House of the Dragon. I thought that was really very cool. Uh, it has to do with uh, uh, Game of Thrones, right, Nameless? So that sounds really cool. Okay, so let's work on this side of her face. And there's a very interesting thing going on in the corner of this eye. I want to show you. So in the corner of the eye, like everything has a shape. And just like the largest shapes in the world, it's going to cause a cast shadow. And you can see how this uh, fat deposit we all have above the eye and below the eyebrow and that is called believe it or not it is called the retro orbicularis oculi fat and it only shows up on the outside of the eye meaning not the middle of the eye but the outside of the eye above the above the eyelashes and be above the eyelid and below the eyebrow and it's in everyone some people have it more pronounced than others but here you can see that on, on Kelly, it comes out. And I love it. I think that's one of her, her features that I really drew me to this portrait. But you can see it definitely causes a cast shadow right there and so we have to address that well we don't have to address it but it's in our best interest as portrait painters to address it and then right here it gets a little darker so every shape even if it's small has the same implications and the same rules as the largest shapes Okay, so let's zoom out. 
So you can see how that shape is coming out very nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my anatomy studies and we are going to see what exactly is happening with the zygomatic arch. Okay, so let's see. I'm looking at my anatomy and let's see right here. Okay, so here I'll bring this study over. I hope you all can see it. And so it's almost at the same angle, which is very good. And so you can see that what's happening here is that this bone right here is called the zygomatic arch. And so we have to address that. So we're going to look at our reference, but we're also going to look at the anatomy of everything. And so we can see that the cheekbone or the zygomatic bone actually weaves in and out right it comes it has a little bit of an arch and it's much darker here because it's going away from the light so it's going in and away from the light and being obscured by her hair right here so we're just going to make sure that where light can't hit it has less light so right here is the zygomatic bone And then this comes in here. So I'm doing the one second rule, but next level one second rule, right? So it's very important when you're doing the one second rule to uh, uh, make sure that you have an intellectual understanding of what's happening as well. Not just eyeballing it. I always say just paint what you see. I think that is not the whole story. You need to paint what you see and also know what you're seeing and look for what you're seeing and then paint what you see. I think that's a much better approach. So you see now the understanding of, of what's going on here is so important. So I don't think you can see the image that I have. Let me see if I can bring that up here. I'm going to add the image so you can see it. Let's see. We'll go to image, pictures, anatomy. There you go. Okay. So now you see the image that I'm talking about and how this relates to our painting of of Miss uh, McDonald here. We put that right here. So you can see what I'm talking about is that zygomatic bone coming down here turning away. Why is it turning away? What's happening? So we have to have a, a real understanding of what we're seeing, right? You don't want to just eyeball it. You're doing a disservice to what you're painting or who you're painting if you're just eyeballing it because you can do much better. Like I said, you don't have to you don't have to have the knowledge or go as deep as a medical student, but if you're doing a lot of portraits, this is definitely going to push you to that next level. I want to paint the next Mona Lisa. That's my goal. And for me to reach that goal, I would definitely have to uh, do everything I can in my in my power to get there, right? So that's basically my reasoning of going to that extra level because I want to take it to the next level. And if I want dramatic results, I have to do dramatic op dramatic actions. And me and my students, we we go to that extra level and we study in a group class of my mentorship. So. 
In my mentorship program, I have the one-on-one -on -one class, which is included, and that's individual for each student, but then there's a group class where we go over the anatomical forms of a portrait, uh, whether that be the ear or the, uh, the fat deposits, the muscles, or like what we were working on last week, we were studying the importance of the sternocleidomastoid and why that's so important and how that relates to the trapezius for the portrait and how knowing where those muscles are, are is definitely going to take your portraits to that next level. Who is uh, poor Yorick? I drew him well. So, so uh, what is that exactly? Let me see. I think I missed some comments here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Did I miss any comments? Oh, a Shakespeare. Oh, very cool. Hey, Mr. Air Todd. How you doing, Hamlet? That's really cool. I think that's great when anyone quotes Shakespeare. So thank you for that. All right, so let's let's make that her nose come forward. There we go. And I did promise to lighten up this area right here. So you see even in this early stage, if we're paying attention to the musculature and the skeletal structure, then our work is just going to be light years above what it would be if we didn't. See right here, I think it's darker than I want it to be. So maybe just lighten this up a little bit, but then come to realize maybe I can bring this dark up here. And of course that is the Maller fat area that we all have right here. Okay, so now we're looking at her skin her forehead right and the forehead is not just a metal plate there's a lot going on here and so I can see like right here and this is probably at the end of the the eye socket this kind of comes up like this so it's gonna paint in that eye socket here and you can see what I'm painting is this area right here, right? So let's make sure that we get that correct. And right here, we have this frontal bone here. So I'm always going to be uh, looking at my anatomical studies, always, always. I'm never going to be relaxed and just just go and, uh, you know, live with what you have. No, uh, this is called the frontal bone right here. And you can see that it's rounded on both sides, right? It's the largest part of the forehead. And so it comes out. And since it comes out, if something comes out, it creates an indentation. And that indentation is right here. So if I'm aware of the frontal bone of the forehead, I'm going to be just naturally aware of this here, right? And the head is symmetrical. So if there's a frontal bone shape over here, it is going to be an equal one on this side. Most of the time it will be symmetrical to a certain extent. Now what's interesting 
is that right above the eyelids, uh, no, right above the eyebrows is the uh, is this bone. I think it's called the orbital ridge, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken. Let me see if I can find something that would give me a little more information. Okay, so that looks like this part right here is the superciliary arch. Superciliary arch. So that's interesting. So the superciliary arch is definitely this shape right here. Now, if you are not looking for that, this arch above the eye, which actually comes forward on the skull, if you're not aware of it, you're not going to look for it. And if you're not looking for it, a lot of times this value change is really very, very subtle. So why no anatomy? Because if you don't, you won't look for it. And especially a painting like this, this is not a Rembrandt type of lighting. It's a, a very high key portrait and it does have the direction of lighting similar to quote unquote Rembrandt lighting, but it's very light. So if I wasn't looking for this superciliary arch here, I would have missed it. But now that I'm looking for it, I'm gonna find it. And if I find it, then my portrait's already gonna have that old master look because they understood anatomy. Remember, what happens on one eye just like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but what happens with one eye happens with the other. So the superciliary arch is on both sides. Am I correct? Because we are, what are we? We're basically symmetrical people, creatures. And we are creatures because we were created by God. And so let's just move this over here. So since, since you have the superciliary arch on both sides creating a light and you have the frontal bones which are coming out further. So that means right in this area is like an ocean of darkness, right? So or relative darkness. So when you have that, you definitely can understand that there is a lot more going on than just painting the portrait, right? It's a lot more happening than, than just, you know, I'm just going to paint this girl. No, there's a lot more happening, a lot more to understand. Blue, have a great night. Always a pleasure. And yeah, so, you know, the skull is such, a, that's the building block, right? That's sort of like the steel girders on a building. Know the skull and you're going to know your, your, uh, your subject when you're painting a portrait. So you see this little ocean of darkness. Let me see if there's a name for that. I know it's not the ocean of darkness, so bear with me. Um, I don't think it, it has a name, but I don't usually, um, let me see if any of my anatomy books actually talk about it. No, I'm gonna have to go a deeper study on that. But knowing what it is, 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 is important too. So. So I always say you don't have to know the names, but if you know the names, isn't that going to be a little bit better? You know, if you know someone's name, don't you tend to uh, talk to that person a little more than if you didn't know their name? So if you know the muscles and the bodies and all and everything, if you know those names and you study it, then you're going to know that muscle on a much deeper level. I never really felt that way in the past, but lately I am because I want to, I always want to grow as a painter. I want to take things to a much deeper level than where they are right now. Okay. So you see, I have a nice, a nice anatomically correct head, right? And how important is that? Extremely important. Because if the anatomy is not right, there's going to be something horribly off. So you want to make sure that you have that correct. And let's see. Let 
let's see over here come up here okay now what we're going to do is we're going to work on this cast shadow right here so this is how you develop a painting is you take it to a next level and you always develop it a little bit more and I'm in a detail mixture so I'm forced to not be very dark right uh, the detail mixture almost doesn't allow me and that's the beauty of my ink mixtures is that you know it's perfect for painting the portrait now you can do this and and use this for which is really fantastic you can use the uh, this as an underpainting if you are working in color whether it be an airbrush or acrylic or oils it would make a, a wonderful uh, underpainting a little overzealous here so let's calm this down anything that is standing out you have to calm it down anything alright we'll continue with this dark here and what's interesting is we have this little bit of a crease in her neck right there and this little shadow and then right here it's very light so I'm going to increase my distance quite a bit I'm just gonna work on her neck a little bit and you see I can see her trapezius muscle right here all right let's come in with one of our our pre-made shields here now I'm not sure if this pre-made shield is in an envelope. Yeah, the smaller shields I keep in an envelope so I don't use them. The larger ones go in a manila envelope. Manila folder, I should say. So I want to work on our hair without any overspray happening on the face. So that's why I make these pre-made shields. They're not stencils. I'm not spraying through them. And all are pre-made, meaning that I made them by hand. They were cut by a machine, but they were made by a hand through a process that I have developed. And so... Got some really good instructional things coming down the pike, which I think will be game changers for those of you who, you know, are portrait painters and airbrush. So something really wild down the pike. Okay, so right here, I'm just going to darken here. So when I darken this shape of the hair. What that's going to do is going to describe the trapezius muscle. Bring this down. Wow, so we only have four concurrent viewers right now. That's it? Only four? You know, there aren't any live streams who are going as deep right now into portrait painting than I am right now so I can't believe it only four concurrent viewers now it's eight okay like I said I'm all for just making regular you know taking these two hours and not doing live streams and that just you know if I don't get enough people watching I have no qualms doing other things to make money so I hope things pick up you know I got other ways to make money and these live streams are for the viewers and if you don't if you don't appreciate it it's going away plain and simple 
I'd rather spend that time doing other things. But, you know, uh, like I said, it's not an emotional thing. It's just the live streams are good, but if you're going to, if people are not going to be into it, then they're just not going to happen anymore. And like I said, I'm all, you know, I got things to do, you know, it's like I could take my money and I could work on things. I could work on portrait commissions. I don't need to give these discourses on anatomy and how it's important to you as a, as a portrait painter. So, like I said, I hope things pick up and then you'll be stuck with what's out there. Thank you, Nameless. I appreciate it. It's a real highlight to see you, my friend. And thank you so much. And Steve Lang says he appreciates the live streams. Oh, I really appreciate you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate my regulars so much. But like I say, in the live streams, I definitely give more in the live streams. And I don't think... I don't hold back. I really give... I give the real full Monty, you know what I mean? For lack of a better term, you know, the anatomy lesson I just gave in this live stream is the same anatomy lesson that I gave in in my group class for my mentorship program. So, you know, it's I'm not showing you bits and pieces. I'm showing you the whole thing. And, um, you know, I really hope that because, like I said, I can do recorded videos. Hey, what's up, Brad? Thank you so much for the super chat. That means a lot to me, my friend. Thank you. You know, and, and that, that goes a long way with helping the channel. Thank you, my friend. Really appreciate it. And, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know. I mean, all my friends say, Tim, you give too much. Why are you giving so much in the live stream? You're giving it away. And that's just who I am. That's just the kind of person I am. I want you all, whether you can afford to take classes or not, I want you to, I want you to do the best painting possible. And that's my motivation for this. But at this stage in the game, in the early days, it's so funny, I was just painting on the uh, acetate. So I'm wondering why. <laughs> so back to the hair. So, you know, it's important, that's what's important to me, that you all enjoy the airbrush. One of the things when I started airbrushing, I always was so heartbroken when people say, I'm not airbrushing anymore, and they had just given up. And uh, that was one of my motivations for starting the live streams, because I would just hate that. I mean, that makes me feel sad, because, you know, someone really wants to learn the airbrush, and, you know, so it was my hope that I could inspire people to just, just to continue trying and continue having fun. Really having fun is so much more important than how it comes out. But here's the beauty of it. The more you do it and the more you, you know, you study and all that, the more that it will come out, you know, it will come out better. I heard an expression, I think it was in, um, oh, Mr. Hemsley, uh, he was on uh, The Office, uh, and uh, so he was giving an address to Andy, the character Andy on The Office was giving an address to Cornell University. And the thing he said, and I am paraphrasing, is that as long as you try, you're going to fail or succeed, but you're always going forward regardless. And, and that's true. And you ever see people who really succeed, they always go forward. Take care, Mr. Leahy. Always a pleasure. And uh, the thing is, as long as you try, you are always, always, always going to go forward so as long as you continue to try you're going to continue to go forward and that's what I hope to do with these live streams and my classes is to get you to know that as long as you keep going and have fun 
And airbrushing is just a lot of fun, right? We all know that. We just love it. You know, no matter what we're doing, we take out this machine and the compressor and the needles and the ink or the, the paper or whatever. And we're just having just the best time. And as we are just working, not so worried about how it comes out because we win whether we fail or succeed. And that's amazing. Oh yes, I sent you a lot of detail mixture, Todd. So when you use the detail mixture first, Todd, I want you to first four drops of detail mixture, four drops of water. Mix that up with like a back of a brush or something in your airbrush and then put that in there and you're gonna love it. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, the control that you're going to have with the Extreme Patriot Arrow and the detail mixture, you're just going to have a great time. You're going to love it, trust me. So I sent you some extra because I know you needed it. And uh, so that's going to be great. So you'll, you'll love it. So as you can see, I'm just working on the hair because I want to develop the trapezius muscle. And a trapezius is right here. And we just see an indication of the trapezius. And then right here we have some darks, which is of her dress or blouse. I'm not sure, can't see the bottom. Might be a dress. There we go, okay, great. And of course we have this cast shadow over here of her jaw and then this little crease on her neck we just put that there and so so again so we're kind of assessing the situation seeing how we can go forward right and so I'm just gonna look here and I'm really liking the face and let me see if I could work on the hair a little bit longer and uh, so I want to definitely uh, protect the background. I want everything to be super clean, the best that I can, right? Uh, so uh, we're going to keep the face stencil. Now I think I might have something for the, which just has the hair and everything else is covered. So I actually can move this aside. Let me see. So it's quite extensive here, the ones that I do have here. Let's see, take your time when you're developing, you know? If you have to take your time to, you know, set up, it's always in your best interest to be as thorough as possible. And, you know, an ounce of prevention goes a long way. So this has the face and everything and just the hair is exposed. So I can definitely come over here and take off the uh, face only shield here. But you can see how nicely she's developing and we're still in the detail mixture. So what I want you to know is that there are tools out there to make you a better painter. And that's what I want you to use whatever tool necessary for you to create the best art you can. That's why you see the mechanic, right? The mechanic is just so amazing how they can fix it, but it's two things. It's knowledge, of course, but it's also he has the right tools to, to handle anything that needs to be done. And that's what I really help my students is to get the knowledge of the tools so you can do it on your own. That's my goal is for you to be able to do it on your own. Let me see here. So I'll just do this a little piecemeal here so I don't have to have the whole hair perfect. I'm just going to work on this right side. So I'm just going to make sure the right side is, is really well covered. And the hatches are battened down. I'm going to take a sip of my lemonade. 
And Mike DeLoach says, do you prefer to skip the light areas or go back to them and add light? So now in the light areas, uh, basically that's where I start off with the white mixture. And so that's where I do the lights of the face and everything. But as far as the hair, I paint around the light areas and then I will go ahead and define them later. Uh, maybe uh, with the eraser or something like that. Yes, yeah, so for the light, you'll see I'll work around the light with the dark. And I'll work on the largest dark areas. And then I'll work on smaller dark areas. And then I'll kind of erase around where the smaller light areas are. The way I I paint the um, so the way that I paint the uh, the hair and you all heard it a million times is that I paint the helmet first and then I start painting the individual groups of hairs and then the hairs. So great question. Yeah. So uh, I'm the kind of artist who really likes the large shapes and really tries to keep the large light shapes intact as I paint and uh, it really helps me so there are some really nice large shapes here and so what I need to do is when I have my magnets I need to put them right on the edge There we go. All right, so you see it's nice and on the edge right there. So uh, Mr. Nameless says he has a random question. Uh, is a sibling's wedding a justifiable excuse to miss work? Only ask because my request was denied when I needed to leave town for a wedding. It was a depressing week. Well, you know, this day and age, a lot of these jobs are having a hard time keeping employees. So what I would do is, you know, make sure that other, other, other employees are not getting time off to go see, to go to their weddings or family functions. So as long as it's a fair environment, then that's okay, but... Still, I don't think that's very nice to not allow you to go to a, a family wedding. Now, if you're a sibling, that's different. That's your sibling. You should be able to go see your sibling's wedding. My God. Would you have been out of town for a long time? I mean, was he far? He or she far away? But regardless... Uh, but that's why there's a big shortage and everyone's always doing uh, help wanted because all these big companies, they, uh, they just piss people off and people are finding different ways to make a living now. So they're kind of getting what they deserve as far as people quitting. Not that I say you should quit. I'm just saying that's what happens. You know, we all have to do what we have to do to pay the bills. So I feel for you. It doesn't mean you can't look for a job that's maybe, you know, in a field that you like better or, you know, something that uh, will give you better hours and more flexibility. Always keep that open, right, Nameless? So uh, a lot of companies, they have this misconception that, you know, we need them. No, they need us more than we need them. They need the workers more because they don't have any workers CBS is not going to stay open, so I think they're learning slowly, you know. From California to Vegas, only three, three to four days didn't conflict with work much after all, but still was a rough week home alone. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a bummer, man. I'm so sorry. But your day will come, my friend, when you'll have a lot more freedom and no one's going to be able to tell you whether you can come or go. Trust me, just keep working hard, uh, keep your goals in front of you, and 
and just remember what you want in life, you know? If you want that kind of freedom and you just pray about it and keep working hard, I know then that will happen for you. You ever think of being an entrepreneur? Have you ever thought of owning your own business, Nameless? And you see how I'm working on the large shapes. I think I could get rid of our anatomical study guy right here. Adios, amigo. There he goes. Okay, he's gone. All right, so let's continue with the large shapes. Remember, we're painting the helmet, right? We're just painting the helmet, happily painting the helmet. But notice that this shield is going to keep things very clean. The background is going to stay nice and clean. And I'm just keeping the, keeping the uh, large shapes. And how I'm finding the large light shape is by painting the dark shapes. And concentrating. One second rule. There's, less than, there's no anatomy, of course, in the hair. But you do see that the hair will follow the anatomy of the skull. So I have three Extreme Patriot Arrows in my studio right now that I have all the pieces for if anyone is interested. Uh, if you do purchase it today, I will include a free gift with it. So uh, like I said, I have three of them available and uh, you know, I love them. If you don't have an Extreme Patriot Arrow, I think you would really, really, really enjoy it. So, remember I have three. That's for anyone out there, of course. So, did anyone ever see that movie called... Oh, let's see what we have here. Hey, Mr. Bob, how are you? Great to see you. Thank you, sir. That is fantastic. So, always a pleasure. Bob, all the way from San Francisco, doing some amazing airbrush and pastel work. It's just incredible. And so, always a pleasure, my friend. Uh, and Mike says, freedom of job choice has a cost, time, effort, education, skill, and more. Wait until you're your own boss. Then there are no breaks when you want to be successful. No, there are no breaks, of course, when you... Are being an entrepreneur so you know you may have freedom to go have lunch or something like that but you know if you're away from from the studio or whatever it is you're doing full-time you know that's money so but work-life balance right but I've been in jobs and heard about jobs where they follow you to the bathroom and they monitor every little thing you do and that's not good either so Yes, yeah, so it's a balance and, you know, being an entrepreneur is not for the, not for the slight of heart because it is, it is a rough way to live, you know, you, you have to t totally, you have to constantly reinvent yourself and you're always going to have detractors and everything like that, but you always got to make sure that you're always doing things that are 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 solving problems for for the people who you are working for and when i had a regular job of course i only i didn't have to worry once five o'clock hit not like i was thinking about the bottom line when you know during the weekend no i was thinking of chilling out and watching the football games well usually i was thinking about my artwork And as you can see, how we are working, working out her hair. And I'm sort of liking the way the hair is coming. 
Now, there is a lot of little shapes here, and you can see that it's not easy. And I'll be refining them. And of course, these shapes aren't perfect, but they're giving me the general direction of her hair. And the large shapes. And now I'm going to do a dusting so that there is some, some ink on the lights because this way if I come in with the eraser I can get much more dynamic range. Still with the one second rule, although we're working on the large shapes and that's what's important. And let's see. Oh, Mr. Steve Lang, thank you so much for hanging out. And so I am so glad you're here. I hope you have a great night, my friend. And thank you always for your support. And I really appreciate that always. So what I'm going to do now is I am... Before I lift it, let me do the dark that's on the edge of her profile here or this cheek area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep that there and I'm just going to hit that dark so I get a really nice delineated side plane here. You figure you're here, right? You might as well nail it. And so now... Let that actually we'll just spray some air on there. So you can see how I'm developing the painting, right? I'm moving around. You can see all the different places I I've been in. Oh, Mike says he has to go contact. Uh, he'll contact me via PM on Facebook about something he wants to do to support the channel. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate all that you do. So I'm very exciting excited about that. And looking forward to your I am, my friend. Thank you always, for uh, Mike Deloach, for your great comments and support. Uh, I really appreciate that. So now what we're going to do is uh, have a great night, my friend. Always a pleasure. I'm going to take off everything except for the border. Let's make this happen. And then we're going to decide what we're going to do. So I'm not really sure the direction. Uh that we're going to paint in but I want to see the whole painting before I do that now I want to do something special with the blouse that's why I'm not going in with the blouse just yet next week will be a surprise of what I'm going to do I think you're gonna love it so always trying to be inventive and uh, cutting edge with the way that I approach the pastel and I mean the uh, airbrush in portraiture because um, I really think there's a lot of room for innovation in in airbrush portraiture and that's one of the reasons why i stick with it so well, much okay so you see here now you see how i worked on the hair it really pops especially here on this edge here which i do love and so i'm very happy with that maybe i can come in a little bit more with the zygomatic arch here because you see that zygomatic arch right here the zygomatic bone and that's also going to be slimming you know we want to make sure that we paint her as slim as she is there we go we're just going to keep going you know keep 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 going So you can see that the major the major uh, features are looking much darker because that's always the star of the painting, right? So we are always going to catch up the darker areas, which are the the anatomical forms, which are not such huge superficial forms, but there are a lot of forms underneath the surface, and that's what we're painting.
Has anyone seen her part that she played in uh, uh, No Country for... What was that called? Uh, that movie that she was in. Um, let's see. Something... I'm going to look for Kelly McDonald here on Facebook really quickly. Let's see. YouTube... No Country for Old Men or something like that. Here we go. I'll, I'll show you. I'll actually play the video and bring it over. Let's see. So this is the video right here. And let's see if I... So this is the actress. But I gave my word. Oh, you can't see it. So I know how I can do this. So I have to do it a little bit more. Now, this may actually... Uh, I'm going to add a uh, website. Let's see. Browser, IP, share window, uh-oh. Uh, here we go. Let's see if it works. The power of technology. Let's go. Okay, look at that. So now let's see if we can hear this. And this is the... the it don't make sense. You gave your word to my husband to kill me? Your husband had the opportunity to This is actually him. a very good movie. No it's Country for Old Men. Not like that. Not like you say. What's very interesting is that she's a Scottish actress. And you don't have to do this. She's a Scottish oh, actress, is. but playing a Southerner. What do they say? They say, you don't have to do this. You don't. Okay. This is the best I can do. Go on. I'm oh, not she was crazy when I saw you sitting there. I know exactly what was in store for And he's a great I'm actor. He was in Vicky Cristina Barcelona. He played an artist in cool. the other movie. The coin don't have no say. It's just you. Well, I got here the same way the coin did. Very interesting. I thought that was. I, I loved her in that film. I thought that was really fantastic. So. Um, so anyway, uh, oh, you do re recall that scene. Wow, that's cool. So Nameless said he saw the movie, and Squeeze says wonderful tonal range, no country for old men. So true, right? It's just so amazing, and really, really, really enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the suspense in that movie, but... I really thought that um, when I seen the movie, Kelly McDonald just stood out to me. She's just such an amazing actress and just has this amazing look about her, which I thought was really like, I have to paint her, you know? You sort of get that feeling. Oh, Nameless says uh, his role model is Two-Face from Dark Knight. Oh, wow. And I'm just going to continue. So you can see right here that there's kind of a hard edge where we don't want a hard edge. So I'm going to keep a mental note, right? So I don't want to go in there. Why? Because I already went in. It's already wet and it's too wet for me to go in. So I keep a mental note. Uh, but I am going to go in there. 
and then you can see there's a little ridge right here in her forehead I'm gonna make sure I put that in and of course this is way too dark so I'm just going to lighten this up here same thing here and what I could do is I could create the shape a little more by putting in the light that's on the other side of that dark and then I could uh, get rid of the dark a little bit but still the the whole uh, shape of this little wrinkle here of the muscle is caused by by a shadow even more so than the light and or sometimes by the light even more so than the shadow so we have so many different ways to solve the same problem which is very exciting look at the works of Giuseppe de Ribeiro he was one of the first artists who I really fell in love with the way that he painted wrinkles wrinkles and creases anatomical creases and stuff like that and that really blew my mind when I was watching Ribera, you know, seeing his work. Uh, Giuseppe Ribera, 1600s, lived in and worked in Naples. He's a Spaniard. What was he doing in Naples? Well, during that time, Naples was a Spanish colony. So that's why Giuseppe de Ribera, a Spaniard, was painting in Naples. And why did he paint like he did? Because in the 1600s, Mick Caravaggio was fleeing Rome and he was living and painting in Naples uh, because the because uh, Rome was after him, the Pope. And so he was painting in Naples. So that's how he learned to paint like that because he was painting in the same city and at the same time as Caravaggio. If you don't know the work of Caravaggio, I highly recommend get a book on him. Uh, it's his work will change you as an artist it does no whoever studies him as a painter whether you're an airbrush artist or a pastel painter or an oil painter his work will change you as it changed everyone that was in his city including the Spaniard Giuseppe de Ribera but the reason why I'm talking about Ribera so much is because he understood how the forms worked and how the light reacted to the forms whether it's a big form like the forehead or a small form like the the nail on a pinky toe it's all the same and we once we realize that you know everything is being affected in the same way by the light it's very uh, edifying and really helps to take your art to that next level I'm going to go in and I'm going to work on her eyes again because we're doing like the full circle. I normally would go into her dress, but I have something special planned for the dress or shirt. So that's coming a little bit later. As you can see, every time I come in, I come in a little bit darker, but also I get a little bit more detailed. And let's see what I have here. Ah, oh, so cool. So yes, that is such a good movie. Scary. He plays such a scary character. Oh, so Bob says he agrees about Caravaggio. Read Troy Thomas's Caravaggio and the creation of modernity. Wow, I definitely have to look into that. I'm going to order that. I'm going to actually order that book from the library. So I am going to read it and we'll talk about it. So thank you for that. So is, um, is Troy Thomas, is he a uh, art historian? Yeah, a lot of conflicting uh, accounts on his life, you know. And I love all different points of view. 
So I'm a bit of an amateur art historian. That is so cool. Thank you for that. Okay, so I worked on one eye. Let's go ahead and work on her other eye. Aye, wrong direction. Okay. Each time that I work, I get darker. Each layer I get darker. But each layer I also get more detailed. And much more exact in my shapes. So that worked out pretty good. I was able to play the movie uh, during the live stream so you guys could see. That's really neat. But I love her expression. It's, it's almost like she's studying you, you know? I do love her expressions. And that's what really drew me to paint Miss McDonald here. I could have painted any actress, but she's really super interesting. Would love to meet her. I just hope she would. Wouldn't that be great? Because I'm going to be doing the live stream for another four weeks or so. And it would just be amazing if I was able to, uh, if she was able to come to the live stream and say hello or something. That's what I pray. That would be so wonderful. It would be such an honor, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Look at that detail. That's $600 airbrush detail and that is done with a $149 airbrush. There's no airbrush that can get better detail than what I just did. So that's exciting. I like offering products that that are, you know, out of this world and just kind of level the playing field of those who can't afford a six hundred and fifty dollar airbrush. I'm gonna let that dry, but before I do, let me just go ahead and paint the anatomy of these forms here. So right here, what's going on there? Why is it a little bit darker there? Let's go ahead and check our anatomical uh, form here. Oh, Troy Thomas is an art historian. Oh, and a good writer. That's very cool. Ah, oh, thank you, Bob. Bob has uh, purchased the Extreme Patriot Arrow from me, the customized version. And he agrees that uh, getting all sorts of detail out of the Extreme Patriot Arrow. So that makes me happy. That means I'm... Um, creating a, a product that is delivering and if you've seen Bob's work I mean the proof's in the pudding his stuff is just out of this world beautiful detail and just such an honor to uh, for him to have my airbrush and use it I am extremely honored so we're going to look at what's happening so I'm going to add another image here let's go here and so I want to see musculature what is happening above her her eye towards the corner okay so now we can definitely see here now this is what we're seeing right here right this this area and that, of course, is called the corrugator super silly. And remember, this was the this was the super silliest right here in the bone, right? Uh, to be exact, it was just so I am giving you proper information. Yes, yeah, so that was the superciliary arch, right? So you can see how the bone. This is pretty much towards the center is superciliary and so that's why this is called towards the center the corrugator super supercilly which relates to the bone 
But also, what's interesting is called corrugator, and I think of corrugated paper and corrugated cardboard and everything like that. And you can see that there are spaces in between, much like corrugation. So the anatomy is, yes, it is difficult. However, it's not a game changer. You know, it's not something. So you can see right here in the painting how you see the uh, kind of the uh, clues of the corrugated super silly muscle, which is really interesting. And of course, with the eyes and the face, everything is pretty much asymmetrical. See, actually symmetrical, not asymmetrical. So what's on one side is going to be on the other side, right? So I'm seeing a lot more space here when it comes to the lower eyelid. So I'm going to actually measure this better with my pencil. We've been working with pencil a lot longer than be working with anything else, right? So let's use the tool that we are we have more experience with when it comes to measurement. So this is going to come out over here. And then probably just below. Bob, thank you so much, my friend, for the Super Chat sticker. Bob and, and Brad tonight, you guys are fantastic. And it just means so much to me and gives me hope, especially on a night like today when hardly anyone is here. Uh, it really gives me hope that, you know, we're going in the right direction, that I am offering stuff that is important, and I try, you know. But the support that you give me really makes a big difference, Bob. And thank you so much, Bob and Brad. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so you see, I did indicate the shadow of the lower eyelid. So I'm just going to put that there. I'm going to let it dry and then I'll darken it up. I mean, uh, darken it up, lighten it up. And then the same here. I'm just going to calm down this a little bit. And we're going to work this out. And I don't want to go too far ahead because that's when I can get into trouble. But the corrugated super silly muscle, which is, is not very silly, but it is a silly muscle. And so that's uh, my little ana anatomical humor. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very funny but anyway uh, let's see and if it's funny even if I'm the only one that thought so and you see I'm working on that corrugated super silly muscle right here so you see when I'm painting and I'm thinking of you know what actually is happening and I'm making an educated uh, assessment on what I'm seeing I'm still doing the one second rule that has not changed one bit but what is changing is that I'm having an intellectual uh, understanding of what I'm working on and I think that's something that I didn't get when I was at art school that I'm doing now as a as a you know an artist that's been in the field longer and I can see the advantage of something like that. And again, we don't want to put a freehand shield. Why would we not want to put a freehand shield? Because then she'll look robotic. Everything here is organic. So find a shield like torn paper that's going to give you an organic shape, right? She's an organic person. She's not a fembot, you know? So you see how I'm creating that organic shape. So who is the actress who was a fembot in the first Austin Powers? Let's see. It's on the tip of my tongue. Let's see if you guys can can name her before me. So a little bit of uh, a movie trivia from the 90s. Uh, I have her last name, but I don't have her first name. So let's see if you could name her before me. I know she was married to Hugh Grant for my UK people out there. And um, 
Elizabeth Hurley, Dwayne, way to go. So cool. That is exciting. So way to go, Dwayne. I appreciate that. And thank you for that. Okay, so now let's zoom out. And so you can see I'm getting the anatomy of her eyes. And if I ever get too linear, I definitely get rid of... It's too early to get linear at this point. So you have to fight that proclivity to get linear, right? So that's, that's a very important thing. Very important consideration. Same thing here. I'm getting a little dark. I got to calm down. Plenty of time to go dark. But it will be a heck of a time trying to lighten things if I went way dark, right? It would really be like, you know, okay, Tim, now you really have to work hard to bring back the light. And you don't want to do that. You always want to work towards. You don't want to have to erase away. Uh, Dwayne says he appreciates the live stream and loves the learning new techniques. Thank you, Dwayne. I appreciate you, sir. I mean, it's so great that you're here, and it's a pleasure. Love your comments, and uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, it's an honor you're here and spending your Wednesday. You can be doing anything else, and you decide to hang out with Tim. So thank you so much for that. I'm going to sharpen this uh, aggressive eraser here. Oh, that's a nice sharp edge, isn't that? Love it. Okay, so let's make sure we get this kind of ridge that the lower lip kind of sits on. The lower lip is not actually on the face. This little thing comes out, and it's separate from what's happening on the face, which is very interesting. Hey, Mark Webb, how are you today? Good to see you. How's the sound today? Better, sir? I know you were having trouble last time, so... I hope it's better today. Oh, so we can see how the, uh, the muscle right here kind of reacts and kind of helping us with her really cute expression here that she has. Oh, great. So fine now. That is so great. So, so glad you're here, Mark. Always a pleasure. So we're in the last 10 minutes of part two, and I just have to say I really am enjoying it today. Uh, really love, uh, love the comments and everyone who just hung out. That was just, it just was a lot of fun. Still is a lot of fun. We have 10 minutes left. And so when so a lot of times it may look a bit harsh at this the portrait might look a bit harsh because we are working on the large forms right and when you're working on the large forms of course we're not getting into the small subtleties which that's where her likeness is or character we're doing the larger anatomical shapes and then when we come in and come in with the darker mixtures things start get a lot more rounded and everything so uh, we just have to be patient don't worry about the likeness or anything like that anything remotely having to do with likeness at this point when we do get a likeness we're going to say thank you very much but we know at this point that's something that comes much later so let's zoom in on her cute lips here and here we go and let's see right over here and I'm always going to just take a, a test piece of paper make sure everything's working well and now I'm going to go right in so on the bottom plane of her lips is a shadow see how I do that that little bottom plane Right here, there's a little bottom plane here. And she was also in a movie called Train Spotting One and Two. Haven't seen those movies, but I heard she had great uh, 
great reviews from it, from them, from those movies. You can see the cast shadow of the wing of the nostril comes out a little bit. And let's see over here. We'll just bring this shadow up a little bit. Over here like so. And Dwayne says, really liking the airbrush, Tim. Still finding the correct mixtures using the Wicked Blind. Yeah, so here's my advice. Thank you so much, Dwayne, for saying that. Uh, so one of the things I learned from the uh, doing the inks you know, I learned that you always got to make sure that you have those dilutions really, really super thin, right? Super thin dilutions. So you want to push that dilution to the consistency of the inks. If you do that, I think it will help. And so give that a try. So the whole idea is to push the create text as far as you can. To get that whether you use the uh, you know the 40 10 you know those uh, you know those mediums they use or just water and just play with the mixtures I know you're gonna find it but I think out of the bottle they're way too thick for doing detail mixtures you know so that was really why one of the reasons why I I really wanted to work exclusively in the inks because I was able to learn, like you say, the proper dilution of using golden acrylics and also using Createx, and it's just been very helpful. The inks, that is. And Brad says she's looking really great. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. Oh, usually start with a 70-30 mix, which is very good. So 70%... Is that 70% uh, medium and 30% of the paint or the other way around? Okay, so let's zoom out. And as you can see, we're just getting a little bit more acclimated with the dimensions of her, her lips. And then we can see her, the uh, anatomy of her nose. Oh, 30% paint. And yes, that's very good. So that's a good place to start. And just push it. One of the people who has been so instrumental in my life as an airbrush artist is an artist called Cass Fuller. And what an incredibly talented painter and just an incredibly nice person. When I first started with the airbrush in 2010, uh, basically, uh, now I was already painting for like 30 some odd years, but uh, actually no, like 20 some odd years, you know, in other mediums. And then I went full force into airbrush. And one of the things that Cass said to me was continue painting, you know, playing with the dilutions. And that's how you're really going to understand this airbrush, that it was really in a dilution and the air pressure so i'm still learning right Dwayne? me too so i'm always learning you know what pressure is best under what situation so uh you're on the right road that's for sure really enjoying painting her i'm really having fun painting uh painting kelly here i just have to say i'm really enjoying enjoying this a lot And it might not look like something, but I am setting up for the end game. Even as early as week two, I'm setting up for the time when I'm coming in with the white pastel, which is really great. 
Uh, we're always learning till we die. So today we die. So true, Mark. Uh, oh, what's her name? Okay, so this, so she is Kelly McDonald. She was in Train Spotting and No Country for Old Men. She's a fantastic actress. Brad says, Dwayne, it doesn't matter which airbrush you use, you're always going to have problems using acrylic paint. Yeah, acrylic is really rough with the airbrush because acrylic, the airbrush were not designed for the airbrush. So there's always going to be, it's always going to wrestle you. Always, always. Oh, the artist. Oh, okay. So Caravaggio, I think that is. Caravaggio, if that helps. The 16th century, 15th century... Uh, Italian painter, Caravaggio de Merisi, I believe. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really interested in reading that book there, Bob. So you definitely got me uh, going on my library website tonight and ordering that. Ted said Jacobs. Oh, he's great. So, yes, Ted said Jacobs wrote a, a great book, which I recommend highly. Light for the Artist. That should be in your library. Light for the Artist by Ted said Jacobs. Really fantastic. He was teaching at the Art Students League when I was studying there shortly. And then I transferred over to the National Academy School of Fine Arts. But he was there. But I wanted to study with Harvey Dinnerstein. When I was at the uh, when I was at the Art Students League, I was studying with uh, George Passantino, who was a student and disciple of the Frank Riley method, which is very popular and made even more popular by the artist Steve Gibson. He uses that method, that um, Frank Riley method, which has to do with a series of grays. And working with the grays and a series of colors and uh, it's very interesting uh, I did that method only for a couple of short months maybe six months and then uh, I was able to get into uh, mr. Harvey Dinnerstein's class thank God and that changed my whole way of seeing for the better uh, Bob have a great oh no so Brad is saying good night to Brad. Take care, Brad. Always a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. And so it is 11:30, so that means I'm I'm leaving as well. Everyone, have a great night. Thank you so much for hanging out and uh, you know developing this painting together. We're getting there slowly, 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 but it is going to work out. We just have to trust the. What are we trusting? The process, right? So thank you, Brad, and thank you, Bob, for the Super Chat stickers, and Mark and everybody, Zavi. You guys are all fantastic. I will talk to you on Saturday, 8 o'clock, for the Pastel live stream, which is really great. Uh, thank you so much, Dwayne. Always a pleasure, Nameless. You guys are great, and you are the highlight of my week, definitely. Bye, guys.